It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with one two-time MLB All-Star, one compact player of the year. The head coach himself went, what, his team scored 27 runs this today? Uh, I wish it was 23. 23 <laughs> runs. Dimitri Young, former Cincinnati Red. We have a two-time X Division champion, the man behind the man behind the man at Impact Wrestling. It's PD Williams. How's she going, eh? Guys, we have a very, very special guest, somebody that we've been geeked out to talk to. It's Trey Miguel. Trey, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, pump the words on excited. No one's excited to be here. It's like I, 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 I'm an introvert. I don't leave my room, so I'm excited to like bring people in without having anyone in my personal space that's that's exciting for me well hold on you, you just told us that you got back from the gym so you must go out like you know i mean i gotta do, i mean i have to but i don't talk to anyone unless i mean there's ben boone right there but i can only keep my headphones on for so long you worked out with ben boone no, don't put that evil on me. Okay. <laughs> I do. I've, been, I've been subjected to it. Hey, is who is you? this Ben Boone? Is he um, related to Aaron Boone or Brett Boone? No, 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 no. But you know what? He is related to Adrian Palicki, who was like in uh, uh he was in Agents of the Shield, that the Marvel show. Yeah, they're, they're cousins. Is he like, one of those guys that doesn't shut up about it? One hundred percent. <laughs> well, that makes sense. If my cousin was in that show, I'd tell every girl that to get her in the band. He 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 doesn't not shut up about it, but like whenever he has an opportunity to bring it up, you bet he brings that shit up. <laughs> I'll make sure I mention that next time. Uh, next time I see him. All right. Well, we already talked enough about Ben Boone. I think we hit our Ben Boone limit for the day. That was it quick. Was We're only. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I hate to do this, but Ben Boom, come on the podcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm Spin Boom. Someone's gonna tag. Someone's gonna watch this on Twitter and then tag him, and then he's gonna feel, he's gonna go and watch this and be like, "What were they talking about?" And then reach out. So, well, so ben. he's like the athletic trainer. He y'all, you know, train and lift weights. Man, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> So let's 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 get some questions in real quick because look, okay. there's the elephant in the room, and I'm going to hit you hard right off the bat. The decision to stay at Impact Wrestling when your buddies go went to WWE was a very big decision. It was one that in this era you don't see too many people making. How far into the process when you guys became the agents did you realize that maybe this is the path I want to take? And how were the other two's reactions when you kind of had to break that news to them? Um, I, I initially knew I didn't, I didn't want to leave Impact at all. Impact has been a home to me, and I've always been a huge Impact fan since I was a teenager. I remember I used to have this really crappy TV stand that had a TV on the top of it, and you couldn't see it from my bed without catching the worst glare in the world. So I would stand up and watch impact every thursday i didn't watch raw you know, like i that impact has been my passion forever so um it means a lot to me to be there and to have them be the first company to sign me to like a television program uh means a lot to me too and i as much as like i'd like to say i accomplished a lot in two years i, I don't think i did really and i don't want to leave a basketball court without winning a championship like that's just not me and that's not to say anything about des or zach you know what i mean but uh though we were a trio a trio we were pretty segregated at impact too you know what i mean like the entire time i was kind of doing a singles thing we, ne we never had too many uh like trio matches there were only a handful of them so um it wasn't a shock to them it wasn't a shock to me i have a lot of things going on between the wrestling school and family and like uprooting just wasn't really something that was feasible so uh, i weighed my options I was like, this just, it's something that can't be done right now. And I, I, I stayed. So what would you say, like, you know, your, your next goals are an impact. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about your big match coming up uh, here shortly, but you know, I look at you, I look at the rascals, you guys are, you know, with the roster, I was with you guys for like from 2018, 19, you guys were like 
awesome. Just I, I really enjoyed working you guys all the time and being part of your matches. Um, but still, like no gold for the cut for the for the group. That kind of like you know, it kind of struck me as odd. So is that, I mean, would you say your goals are like, so that's know? a big part of my goal. Like the X division championship, honestly, I feel like it kind of went like unpaid off last year, my feud with Ace Austin. And um, I felt like we it had a lot of potential for growth and to get more out of where we were going. Um, but I didn't accomplish getting the X Division Championship, but all my favorite wrestlers have had the X Division belt. You know, I've watched you have it. I watched AJ have it, Amazing Red have it, Austin Aries have it, Samoa Joe have it. And I like that. The, the X Division Championship means more to me than any other championship in pro wrestling. So I, I, I'm not going to become X Division Champion <clears throat> in NXT. That's just not going to happen. Like that, 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 that's not how it works. That the, that physical championship holds a place in my heart. Like I have to have that one day. I, like people say what they want about like what championship you mean. Like that means something to me personally, and I I just want to see that through. Like I mean, so I, it's I think it's I'm still such a fan of pro wrestling. It still baffles me every time I show up to tapings and I look around the locker room and the company I'm keeping now because it it feels like it really was only a couple years ago where I had to watch you on TV, where I was watching the guns on TV, all my favorites. And now you guys help me with becoming a better wrestler and you're the company I keep. And like, I get to pick your brains and you guys give me feedback. Like it's, it's, it's still surreal going into my third year with the company. Um, but the exhibition championship means a lot. So those, that's my biggest goal right now for real. You know, I'm a, like I was telling you before we got on there, I'm a big fan of you guys, you know, the whole, you know, 420 stick, and y'all had the club out smoking <laughs> like that 70s show. You know, like like when I first got on uh, air with um, Dennis when we was doing another show, he introduced the guy and said that that was my favorite tag team. I was like, Dennis, you lie, dude. I like the <laughs> rascals, man. Because you, know, you had me laughing every time my favorite one was the one when Moose came in. And Moose he took money. your glasses. Yeah, man, that one hurt. My grandma me. gave me them glasses. <laughs> oh my God. That was funny. Now, now do y'all write that yourselves and come up with that? Or you know, yeah, tell that, me about how that goes down. Cause that is some funny stuff. That was my favorite thing. And actually, we had a little thing going with Petey where we would try. Remember, Petey, when we, we sat down and we tried to figure out how many like Will Ferrell references we could get over? Like, oh, you know, that's we right. Like, we wanted I to remember do a that. Different Will Ferrell reference, like everyone, because I think we got like two off in a row. Man, people like started biting them on Twitter. But then we just started doing our favorite movies. And I remember one day we just showed up to tapings and we're like, dude, I really want to just rip off Friday. I think that'd be so funny. <laughs> like, what if, what if we do the Red and Debo scene and it worked perfect because Moose, I was like, dude, Moose is Debo in this. Perfect. Yeah. We pretty much like got to write like 95%. I mean, a lot of, honestly, every one of them, they gave us creative freedom, which was always super cool. We would get bullet points like, hey, we have to touch base on these things. These are important. But other than that, you guys kind of know what's funny. So you know do that and what we would do is we would go sit out back and we wouldn't ask each other like what's funny we'd be like what's something stupid <laughs> it was never it, it was like think of something stupid don't try to be witty don't try to be don't try to be clever with it try to be idiotic and immature with it as much as you can be because i think that's what's funny naturally and you know what it really was funny especially the one with gail kim and y'all oh my god <laughs> jeez i mean and and the like did Moose um put have any input to Gail or any other guests that had that that guest started on there? Cause I mean, Jesus, I you missed know, it when y'all when y'all had your last your last hurrah when y'all broke up. Man, that really hurt me because I was like, man, this is a funny oh, skit man. that's no longer there. Uh, you know what's super funny about the Gail one is Gail wasn't even supposed to be in that one. Like she was never written mm -hmm. to be in it. But one one day we were getting ready to do a pre tape. And Gail's walking by and she goes, when am I going to get to go in the treehouse? And we were like, let's see if you can do it today. And we just went and asked Jimmy, like, hey, does this, like, make anything not work? And he was like, no, I think it's great. Let's do it. And <laughs> it's just that mentality. Hey, if it, if it gets over, it's my idea. If it doesn't, y'all came up with it. So, and it worked, I guess. So, 
I loved it. Like, it really was that spontaneous. Kim just was, what do I got to do? We're like, I mean, I think we just ask. <laughs> I think we can ask them right here. So, and that worked. You come back to Impact with this edge and fire and passion, which I really enjoy watching you with this. How hard is it not to try to interject comedy or humor into this incarnation of uh, Trey Miguel that will watch it? Man, I can I can tell you it's 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 pretty unnatural, honestly, because I'm not that serious of a guy. I really don't like I feel like when I'm in the locker room, I'm dick and ball jokes like it's <laughs> it, it's pretty just <laughs> Like we're just chilling, you know what I mean. So like, I really do have to like channel that. It's it's natural to be goofy for me, and that's why I enjoyed being one of the rascals. And I think that's something that made it easy for people to like be drawn to us, is because we weren't putting on characters and we were just going out there and being ourselves. So to not be yourself is a little bit difficult sometimes. But just being a professional and knowing you got a certain job to do and you keep that in mind, but it, there is like, I do have to like channel that it is not natural to do it. So how much now you got this serious character going on. Uh, when, when you came, I guess, re debuted, I don't know what you want to call it, but back in January, you know, I was part of it. I, I don't think I, yeah, I might've aged in a few of your matches or whatever, but I, I know that the, the character is now a serious character, you know, but I mean, obviously you're doing this feud with, uh, with Sammy right now. How much has Sammy helped you with that character? Because you have to feed like directly off of him in order for this to work. So how much has Sammy helped you out with this this feud with this character? Sammy's helped a lot because of the narrative that he has right now. And we have I feel like we have a good chemistry and ability to just play off of one another. You know, and so we not everything so meticulously like, hey, this is how I have to make this sound or look like it's really just like get into it and uh sammy helped train me and i know sammy sammy personally and so i have that comfortability with him and understanding that like i don't think we can go too far in this so like i'm gonna push your buttons and you're gonna push mine and this is what this is gonna be something great because of it we have a good mutual respect and understanding like Whatever I say is just what I say. It's nothing how it might not be personal, you know, um, and that helps a lot. Sammy's been really instrumental in helping me like find a new, like kind of new legs to stand on. And that's and that's from a distance because I really don't see or talk to Sammy too often. Um, he's been to the wrestling school that I have a couple of times, but um, a huge part of it, like in ring, I've tried switching my style up a little bit and trying to introduce something new in that aspect too. And I owe a lot of that to Alex Shelley, who has been taking a lot of the time out to uh, train with me on Fridays since I think like November of last year. It's been a pretty regular thing. And that's that's been a really big deal to me also. Now you mentioned earlier that you have a wrestling school now, and you train under Sammy Callahan. What are the things that you teach personally in, in the school? Do you teach um, high flyers to be high flyers like yourself that have all the moves and stuff? Or, or do you characterize or do you have the, the big guys work with the big guys? Or, you know, what is your job with the wrestling school? Um, so I'm the head trainer. Uh, we have a, a vast variety of like different shapes and sizes um one of my students sam beal he's been featured on impact recently and he's sam's in great shape he's a bigger guy than i am he had he made a big transformation he was um pretty chubby guy a couple of years ago and i mean not in a great shape physically and he he couldn't perform the way that he does now and i'm very hands-on with him regardless of the size difference and i have to be with a lot of my students because i want them to have that comfortability with me i feel like having a rapport to them is more important than having their respect or having them fear you or something like i've been trained by a few different people so i feel like i have good tools to take away from everyone that i've been trained under um we got guys that fly. We got guys that are hosses. I got one guy, Ox, who is a gentle giant, the sweetest dude in the world who's super jacked, has a nipple piercing and a, <laughs> mu, and a, and a mu tattoo on his shin and a list. But he's just the big, the biggest, most wonderful man you ever met. And he's so he's so sweet. 
and trying to train him to be a monster so hard, but it's, it makes my job fun. Um, I like having a variety of different guys to train because it challenges me as a trainer though, because if I only trained people to high flyer to chain wrestle or do groundwork, then I'm not training them to be a pro wrestler. I'm training them to be in a box. And I, that's something I don't want to be. And I think that's something that Petey's really good at, like keeping himself. I'm like, Petey can fly. He can be technical. He can, he can wrestle the big man style if he has to. I like being a wrestler like that, like a pound for pound all around badass. And that's something that I like emulating that with my students. I like giving them a little bit of everything if they can do it. Do you have any more um, sneak peeks that um, – because you brought up Ox and Sam. Are there any others that are prospects that are about ready for, you know, to prime move time. up in the ranks? Yeah, prime time. That's good. Um, Sam's probably at the top of that list, honestly. Ox, we got some more work to do, but I have a class of nine students. Um, and of the nine, everyone – Ox is just the newest kid that we have, and um, he's just not ready. He hasn't – had a first official match yet either but everyone else is doing shows already uh, i have four kids getting ready to debut for warrior wrestling which is in chicago it's a really big indie that has become popular over the last few years they feature some really really good matches on some big cards um they hosted a show two years ago that featured Dezak and myself versus team chaos which was um, Rocky Romero, Will Ospreay, and Amazing Red, and Ooh. that was that's my favorite match I've ever been a part of. That I I got to meet Red for the first time that night, and I cried at the end of the match. I was just so emotional because that literally was the man that let like put it in my head that I could do this. Like I, it, I'm small, but he's small too, and he's on TV killing it. He's the X Division champ, and that's what I wanted to do. So when I got to meet Red and he was just the nicest human being and the most humble person ever and such a professional and an amazing person to wrestle, wrestling him was just like, Oh my God, he's, he's an anomaly. It's so freaking mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Um, that was, that was awesome. You, uh, you talked about your love for impact wrestling and it really made me wonder is your goal to become the face of the company. I know everybody has different goals in, in our company, but to hear your love for impact, what is your in game at impact? That, that is it, man. But I'm not going to say it like it's like I'm next in line for it or anything like that. I believe there's a pecking order to it and I'm willing to put the work in. Like I don't wrestling's all I ever wanted to do. I'm 26 years old. So I have the rest of my life to put this work in. And I'm not rushing to get anywhere else. So uh, that that is a, that is a goal of mine. I don't think it's unachievable. Um, if I thought any of this was unachievable, I wouldn't be doing it. So that's okay. definitely a plan. So be, before we get to the you know rebellion, because I I do want to touch on that. I want to get your opinions on you know obviously your match, but then some of the other things that's happening. Really big pay per view for us at Impact. Yeah. But let's talk about. I, I know last year. Uh, I think by uh, by the Impact fans, you were involved in the match that was voted like match of the year, and it was at last uh, last year's Slamversary, Slamversary yeah. 2020, in front of no fans, right? <laughs> uh, and it was, uh, I mean, that's just the pandemic we're in, right? Um, you, but it was uh, for 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 the Impact Championship, um, and it was like Ace Austin, Eddie Edwards, you had Eric Young and Rich Swan. You were in that one. Um, tell me about that match. Do you feel like that was like your best match of the year or do you feel like you had, you know, I don't, think, that were great? I don't think that was my best match of the year, but I think it gave me my biggest moment of the year with the okay. power slide destroyer, <laughs> um, which <laughs> I was good, man. I, I can't do that shit. <laughs> um, and honestly, that was supposed to be a tornado DDT originally, but, uh, I called that someone had a problem with it and, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do tonight. I want to bust this out. Someone heard it and someone didn't like it. So I was it like, wasn't me because I wasn't even there. No, I know, so. I know. <laughs> well, it, uh, and then I, I literally, I look at Des. I was like, well, I don't know what to do, bro. I only, I've only practiced the DDT out of this power slide thing. And he just goes, do a destroyer. I was like, what? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, do a destroyer. So I was like, are you kidding me? And uh, dude, this is so funny because. Uh, 
Dreamer saw me practice it one time and he goes, I didn't see that. And I'm not going to, I nope. If anyone's asked me, I, I just didn't see it. <laughs> so he just walks away. <laughs> he was not having it. And then uh, I asked Scott at, afterwards, like, Hey, did you see it? And he just, he did not sell it for me at all. <laughs> I, just, I said, tell PD I'm sorry. And I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I thought, I mean, I thought it was great. The whole match I thought was great too, but uh, that's why I had to bring it up just because, um, yeah just like you said it would <laughs> i could see it. I, I i could be there too i could just picture it if i was there and somebody saw it i didn't see it i don't nope, nope. I just it's out there just it's live don't worry about it <laughs> but uh that that was really cool actually it, of all matches i think my favorite match for impact last year was we did a a special for ovw on the impact plus app and it was zach and i versus the north and that was my favorite match that I had for Impact last year. I go back and watch that randomly just because I, I really liked it. So the landscape of wrestling right now where that fourth wall has been taken down, we have obviously Kenny Omega going up against Rich Swan, And, um, you know, the involvement with the Good Brothers and AEW now, Brandon, with your few with Sammy Callahan, um, what is your thoughts about that and possibly traveling to New Japan and, and how all these companies are now working together? I think this is the coolest time in the world to be an or to be a wrestling fan. I like being a wrestler is crazy, but imagine being a fan right now. We have wrestling every single day of the week. Monday through Friday, there's a different product to watch. You got people jumping ship from show to show, company to company. And then I think we're like definitely during COVID and maybe even for the decade. This is I think this is the biggest main event like in wrestling history for a while. I don't I'm not going to say of all time, but I mean, like for some kind of grace period. I don't, I don't think there's been a bigger match than this. Swan's a double impact champion and Kenny Omega has the AEW championship and AEW has been on a crazy, you know, just skyrocket climb since they've started as a company and they have a cool product and it's, it's cool seeing their guys come in and come out and it's, you never know like who's going to pop in the locker room. So it's kind of always like really interesting having work days and just seeing, Oh, there's Matt Hardy walking. Oh, there's private party. What are they doing here? What, like, yeah. what, 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 what <laughs> taking up next? You know what I mean? Like, does this happen to me or does it happen to whoever it's, keeps you on your toes but um i don't i think this is i think it's so cool everything that's happening I, it, the impact having a working relationship with new japan again because i mean we just had chris bay compete in the super junior cup last year tjp did also so that's super awesome i can only imagine how cool it'd be to have uh anyone from new i mean we had finn juice come in that's and now they're the impact wrestling tag champs you really just never know what's going to happen. It, I mean, you can assume no one from WWE is ever going to do any crossover stuff that you, we can X that one out. But everything aside from that, you, you don't know what to expect. That's so cool to me right now. So it's got so it's got to be awesome for you to come come to work, you know, because it's like you never know what's going to happen, what's been written up. Yeah. You know, maybe Tony Khan is looking over and wanting to poach from impact to get some products over there i mean it's, it feels like you know for me in baseball right before that trade deadline you know you're on a shitty ass team and you're doing good enough to go to a contender and it's like i feel that i did my very best to try and get trade i never did during the season so i'm pretty sure that you know because y'all always put on good matches in impact and the matches that you put on personally i mean there's a a whole lot of excitement and now that you got into a serious character you're no longer the fresh prince of midair which was a cool name by the way so <laughs> <laughs> so with all of this excitement i'm pretty sure you're working not only for yourself and i mean for impact but you're also working for yourself in the prospects of being able to shift and maneuver yeah yeah definitely um the fresh prince thing actually i don't I don't even know if it's officially gone or not. I mean, I, <laughs> I remember I remember coming up with actually 
I just put it on my my pair of tights for rebellion. So I guess it's not gone. We're sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I posted this thing the other day, and I told Twitter, I said, uh, my new gear is completely inspired by John Cena, so everyone thinks I'm going to show up naked because John, C- you can't see John Cena. So <laughs> that won't be the case, though, I promise. Pete, and I'm not wearing jorts either. That's not okay. it. Don't wear jorts. <laughs> no jorts. Please don't. What's the length law on jorts? Or, or is it uh, just like below it? the knees. Just below the knees? Whatever your knees are. That's that's the law. It's, I, I've seen it in the, the the criminal code right there. <laughs> that's amazing. Pete, hey, have you ever seen Dimitri Young this like giddy to talk to somebody? Uh, no, because no, I, I think he's feeling it from the. I don't know. He lo- he loves the rascals, so uh, I have. Yeah, it. I've rascaled it up with some D Mac before we got on air. <laughs> sure, sure. Hey, so. All right, we're we're on the subject of rebellion. So Trey, I want to get your take on a, on a couple things. You already mentioned that this is probably you know one of not necessarily the biggest, but one of the the biggest in a long time uh, you know main events that we have. We have Kenny Omega, Rich Swan, um, you know, title versus title, right? And we also have like uh, Mauro Ronaldo calling Ooh, the match. Yeah. Like he 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 called probably the biggest pay per view match in the past. A very long time with Mayweather versus uh, um, uh, McGregor. Yeah. I genuinely am jealous yeah. that he's not calling the entire pay per view. I uh, know, right? I was thinking I that would the same do thing. Anything to have him call Sammy and I's match because I think he's the best commentator ever. See, and I I agree with you on that one. Now let's get like um, you don't know the outcomes of these matches or anything like that because no. I know you don't because I don't know the outcomes of these matches. So. Uh, um, who, who who do you got to pick for for uh, Rich and uh, Rich and Kenny? Dude, Rich is my dude to the end of my days. I'm picking Rich all the way. Like Rich has more to. I, I forget a reputation. Forget like what company you're representing. Like he is a double world champion right now. That's that's more than being a single world champion. I don't care what company you're at. Like I really don't. Rich has got more on the line and Rich has, even without those championships, he's got just more in his heart to like, he's got to bring it home. He's got to. Companies it's, just, on no, the it's, line. Not, it's like yeah. not optional. You know what I mean? Like it's just like a do or die fire flight and swans swan can fly, but he's about to fight first. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, now what do you say if uh, that outcome, what, what are your thoughts? You know, like if, if, if Rich doesn't succeed in this title defense, and now you have Kenny Omega is the Impact World Champion. What do, you, what do you see how, happening? How do we get the championships back? Exactly. Interesting, I, isn't it? Like, how do we get them back? Because, I mean, like, we've only seen the Good Brothers go to AEW. Unless, yeah. I mean, what, what happens next? It's very, very. That's, that. like, I, I can't stop wrapping my brain about, like, wh- I don't know. I can't imagine what would ha- like what happens next if Kenny wins them. I can. I the way AEW people come into Impact, you know what I mean. Like there could be a million matches for in opportunities for them to bring their championship back home. But how many? Like the Good Brothers aren't going to go over there and fight for the world belts to bring them back, or <laughs> are they? I don't know. No, there aren't. They all part of like the Bullet Club together. They're all like you know together pretty much. Yeah. What about like? So now that that's interesting because now we got Finn Juice versus the Good Brothers at the pay per view for the tag titles. Now Finn Juice already won it and they brought him to Japan. They've had him since, yeah, I don't know for a couple months now or whatever it is, right? But yeah. now how do how do we get those titles back? Well, they're already coming back for the pay per view. We have to, we have to win at the pay per view. I mean, is that is that your is that your guess? Is that Rebellion has to be t- like Team Impact on on both of these title defenses. Like otherwise, where do we, where do we get them back? When does this happen again? Exactly, exactly. So let's let's move on to uh, you and uh, you and Sammy now. All right, you guys have a last man standing match. I've never been in a last man standing match. Before, Me neither. Ever. So I can't even give ever. you. I can't even give you any. I haven't been in one either. Um, don't make it boring though. That's all I can say. <laughs> don't make it boring. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Those some of those some some last man standing matches are really good, but I know you and Sammy will. Uh, you you guys won't kill that ten count or anything like that. I, I'm sure you guys are, are gonna are gonna kill it. But 
Um, obviously, you're going to pick you to win, right? Dude, I have to. Be great if he didn't, though. Yeah, but I, like, I think Sammy you know, to win. You know, I'm putting yeah. all my money on it. And stuff. Honestly, I mean, like that'd be a smart man. Like, just bet everything I own on Sammy and then throw it. <laughs> <laughs> just literally, like, let him eye poke me and then just lay down for the count right at the beginning. Save myself we've all seen, the hurt. And... We've seen that somewhere, right, guys? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> So now the title that you're striving for, the exhibition championship, we got uh, Ace Austin uh, versus uh, TJP versus Josh Alexander. I already made my pick. I think it's 141 and two-third percent chance in the favor of uh, that was Josh my Alexander. Favorite thing in the entire world. Oh my god. Who who do you got for that one? I want Ace to keep it so that way I can beat his ass and take there it. There you go. That's I don't, what I'm I don't, talking want, about, I don't want to man. take it from anyone but Ace. It just wouldn't be gratifying. It really wouldn't. Him and his stupid smile and that like slimming <laughs> mohawk man bun. Like he gets thinner every time he gets a haircut. Just thinner and thinner and thinner like that. He, he does yoga. He does DDP yoga in the middle of the locker room off of like a dri- beat by a dread bullet. And it like bothers everyone. We're all just sitting there trying to relax. And there's DDP screaming at Ace Austin and Madman Fulton doing like, yoga. Just breathe it. This is 100% true, guys. <laughs> <laughs> With all of his gear just compartmentalized and categorized and color <laughs> organized and separated all over the floor. I, I know. And it's right next to my office. You've seen my office, right? In front of every is just right out in the open. <laughs> right out in the open. That table. You got the coffee, your packet with your sheet. That or It's got every, all the matches, the rundown. Yep. Love it. Oh my God. All right. So <laughs> we're done with Rebellion for now. We can move on. Dennis. <laughs> We had our good times. It sounds like it. So I, I you know, I kind of sitting back listening. So I stopped being a host for a second and became a fan. So I got to get my bearings straight. But let's, I guess, take a look at the evolution of your character. We've touched on it a few times in this in this episode. Do you have a plan going forward on how you want to present yourself? Is there like maybe not this year, next year, or the year after, but is there an end game to where you want to be character what? Um, actually, no, because I'd never, I mean, like, if if you asked me that in November, I'd be like, no, dude, the Fresh Prince is what it is. Like, I, I'm, I'm where I want to be, and I, I was positive of that, you know? And then I had to, like, reassess and then start doing things differently, and now I feel like what I'm portraying in that name kind of don't go hand in hand. So now I'm like, I mean, it's not about names and anything like that, but having, having a stamp on it to like call it something, you know what I mean? Whether you be a, a anti-hero or a monster or something like that. Um, I don't actually have that in the books. Like I don't know exactly where to go next. This isn't where I thought I would be six months ago. So I'm still figuring things out as I go. Um, that's that is where that is in all honesty but um i know what kind of matches i want to have if that means anything and i feel like, like that will come naturally so, hey, let's talk about um the your your indie career for a little bit so what's like i know what my home promotion is um you know it's border city wrestling that you know scott demore trained me all that kind of stuff you mentioned all the people that helped train you along the way including sammy What's your like home promotion and how did people start getting to recognize uh, Trey Miguel? Have you, have you always used the name Trey Miguel yes. in, in wrestling? Okay. Yeah. My home promotion was Rockstar Pro for a long time in Dayton, Ohio. Um, mm-hmm. That was a real staple in Ohio. That in a company called AIW, which is literally polar opposite of Ohio. We were Southwest. They were Northeast. So um, Rockstar is where I really like sunk my teeth into wrestling i uprooted from toledo in 2016 the day before my 22nd birthday to live in uh the house of christ which might not be a popular thing to promote anymore but um i i was trained with zach living in a house full of 10 wrestlers living on top of one another uh training mondays and tuesdays and then doing rockstar every wednesday and then uh iwa was a big one for me too uh they ran thursday nights so it'd go rockstar and then iwa and then we would do like i pay-per-views on fridays and uh for rockstar pro 
and they started to, they had a good working relationship with CZW. So a lot of the CZW crowd would pay attention to Rockstar Pro and um, with Twitter and gifting becoming a thing. And uh, Jake Chris booked um, Rockstar Pro for a long time and him and I were close. So he was really high on giving me good matches, matches that would elevate me as a performer. Um, as long as I performed well, the guy that I was wrestling with, you know, put me over to the next guy and so on and so forth. So I got a lot of my opportunities there. And then further on, it kind of, it's a separate entity, but Dayton wrestling kind of became more synonymous with Sammy Callahan's revolver, pro wrestling revolver. And then that kind of turned into my home promotion. And but and it's still based in Dayton, but that it just became what was the new scene because Rockstar Pro was no more. Now, I wanted to follow along with um, PD's question because I was going to word it differently, but I like how you worded that, PD, on, you know, your home promotion. Because I wanted to know about the indie career. So who is, um, you know, your trainers and who are your running buddies that you trained with that helped you along the way besides, you know, MSK uh, and what is MSK anyway? You know that'd be a separate question, but okay. Um, even knows. I actually, do, it, I'll I'll tell you a funny story. Um, uh, so I was originally trained by CK3, who I run uh, Skull and Bones with now here in Toledo, yeah. and then uh, I trained under Dave Christ and Jake Christ and Sammy in Dayton uh, for probably two and a half three years and aside from des and zach or nash and west which is still weird for me oh, yeah. uh to say <laughs> we're for us all does not roll off the tongue um really i only had those two and then myron reed myron reed is my baby brother he's signed with mlw he's actually the fourth yes. rascal but he had we were a team of four and Myron had to go handle life. You know, he had a kid and he had to move back to Louisville, Kentucky to take care of what he had to take care of. So it kind of, we didn't part ways or anything, but we just, we couldn't keep up with each other anymore. So uh, Myron was like, he kept me sane when Des and Zach weren't there. That, that, that was baby boy <laughs> you, you know i started watching mlw during the pandemic and he was like the guy i actually you know follow him on instagram and i don't follow too many folks but i follow him and i'm just like and i read on wikipedia that he was one of the rascals and i'm like man that, that the youngest goat i can't see him as part of the mm -hmm. rascals i, I mean because he is just so serious and his promos was, are incredible what was cool is i mean myron and i teamed more primarily it was so it was des and zach that would team as the rascals and then myron and i would team as the rascals also but we were it was kind of like being like dx or end up you know what i mean we all just were under the same umbrella but we like myron and i had a full set of tag moves that i would never do with des or zach because we just didn't do those and vice versa um but myron myron was a little asshole as a rascal he was the funny like he was kind of like just being a like a shitty 16 year old who was cocky or something like that. He'd come out and like flip people the bird and like do these weird dances and just, he pops the hell out of me. I really, really, really wish that like one day I get to like be with Myron in impact or something like that, because man, I love that kid. He's so good. Like he's, he's a prodigy to be like made one day. He really is. Yeah. I like when contract up. Yeah, we will, we will find that out. <laughs> we'll talk, we'll yeah, because yeah, I, I like them with injustice. You know, I watch every watch MLW Fusion and and I, and I solely watch him and Alexander Hammerstone. You know, I, I like, like Alexander Alexander Hammerstone. I've had some good matches with him on the Indies before. Now, tell tell us about that. You said you had a MSK something funny story. Oh, uh, so um, MSK has a meaning. And they they don't want they don't know if they want to go with it or not. So what they were told is, hey, we're just gonna call you MSK and see if the internet comes up with something better than what we have. So wait, so did they come up with the name, or uh, I'm sorry, did it did uh, Des and, and Zach come up with the name, or did like WWE come up with the name? I or a little bit of both. A little. It was like, a oh, little we're gonna call you MSK, but not 
say what it is. Yeah, it was a little bit of both because we they, we used to be a part of this thing called JML where it didn't it was not an acronym for anything. It didn't stand for anything at all. But the joke like people wanted to know what it meant because it like we put periods between everything. It was an umbrella. <laughs> like, it was like Tommy and Tommy and Shane Strickland, Sammy Callahan, uh, Zach. Uh, Des, myself, both the Chris brothers, we were all JML and we would do this, but no one knew what JML meant. And we would tell people, if you don't know, you don't know. But there was there was literally no, it wasn't an acronym though. And <laughs> Just messing so with people, I like that, it. That, that's what MSK essentially is. So but there's no meaning behind it. It's like no meaning, but if they said if the internet came up with something cool, then maybe they'd use it. Oh, well, there, there you go, internet. Um, come up with something cool, and maybe they'll use it. It literally, it, it doesn't have a meaning. Okay, well, well isn't, that, is isn't that some shit? <laughs> like, everyone wants to know, damn, what does this mean? Like, this you tell me. neither of their you names tell me what it means. These letters, like mouse and credence. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this made no sense. <laughs> I'm a nerd, so it's all right. All right. Uh, you know, this is this has absolutely been fun, and I'm still kind of geeking out having you here. But now I want to know, what do you consume? What is the Trey McGill wrestling that he likes? He enjoys. How much do you watch it? What now that you're in the industry, not just in the industry, but climbing the ladder to being one of the premier performers in it? What do you watch? I honestly, it, it's so hard for me to watch wrestling anymore because, and I, I don't, this is not a shot at anyone. I feel like wrestling's really oversaturated right now and it's really hard to find things you haven't seen before. And I, like, I, I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm not watching it. Like I'm taking a break so that way I can try to generate original ideas. If I'm not seeing something being done, then I can't see something and tweak it. But if, if it comes out of nowhere in my head, then I haven't seen it somewhere. So maybe it is original and then I'll do it and find out if it is or isn't. So honestly, I'm, I'm I, more than that. I'm trying to study movies and shows or anything like that. Just watching anything I can to look for character development, really, because that's where I'll find stuff like that or like pick something from a certain role that someone played that I really enjoyed or find a, a line that fits the narrative I'm portraying that I can put in a promo and stuff like that. Like that's kind of what I'm doing now. Uh, more than watching wrestling, I watch I watch my students wrestle so much I couldn't imagine turning it on if unless it's Impact. I watch Impact faithfully because that's our product and I love it and I got to keep up with what my friends are doing. So other than that, I really don't watch it. I, I scroll through social media and see all the clips and stuff like that, and it's it's a lot. There's so yeah. much. no, I I know what you mean. I mean, uh, even though we're there filming it and stuff, we film you know out of order. We film so many weeks. Uh, you don't you don't see everybody doing their promos because that's all being done while you know we're in while the ring. Stuff like that. Yeah. You don't know what the finished product looked like, so you, you're kind of excited. We're like, hey, I'm gonna watch it this Thursday and see what's going on. So I I totally get what you're seeing. Another thing I do, and I want to know if you do it as well. Like I, I look around the locker room, and now that I have the wrestling boots back on and stuff, I'm like, well, I've never wrestled him in a singles. I never wrestled him. That would be cool. I do Is there anybody all the time? So, so who are you looking at that was like, man, I'd really like to have a, like a singles match with him, or I would like to team up with this person and have a tag match with them or, or whatever the case may be. Saban. You never had a singles match with Saban? I've, I haven't had any in-ring interaction aside from training. Yeah. Oh. I think when they first showed up, Des and Zach had a match with him right away. And uh, I was watching in gorilla. I literally cried during that match because the guns were my favorite tag team mm. growing up and Des and Zach are my brothers. And, I was like, damn, I would kill to be. I'm not shedding tears because I'm sad, but it's just an awesome match. And yeah. I wish I could at least be ringside for it. But fuck, is it beautiful to watch right now? Yeah, I mean, Saban and, and uh, Shelly suck anyway. So, I mean, you're not missing much. No, I'm I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's not the truth. That's far from it. Uh, who else do you look at in the locker room? I, I don't know. Like, have you wrestled? I've. I was gone for a year. You might have wrestled everybody in the, no, in the locker I, room. No, I would really like, I mean, it sucks that. Uh, he just got announced that he's out for six to eight months, but Eric Young, I'd really like to have a singles match with him. 
yet to have a singles match with Josh Alexander. Oh, man. I don't think you and I have had a singles yet. No, we have never had a singles. We haven't had a singles. We've been in multi-mans together. I'd really like that match a lot. And uh, of all, I'd really like to work with Fala Ba in a singles. <laughs> that, I have, you would probably have a hell of a match with him. Dude, I really feel like I would. I I love Fala in the locker room, and mm. I he's a great wrestler. I would I would love to see what we would come up with. Dude, yeah, and it's such a nice year, dude, honestly, too. Fala's probably been like, at the top in my top three for real. I'm like, I'm just waiting for a singles with Fala because it's gonna be something unexpected. Yeah, no, I I, I want to see that. Such a, speaking of Fala, uh, we got to get him on this podcast. Su- such a nice guy too. Like I, when he when he busted me open, which uh, oh, will air yeah. probably this Thursday, dude. He was like, and I'm like, but don't worry about it. It's pro wrestling, man. We always we get hurt, and he was like texting me and calling me. You you okay? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm okay, but. He's he's you you can attest for it. He's that yeah, type dude, of guy. He, he's the sweetest man in the world. He really is. So, like he, a friend to everyone in the locker room. He really is. Like there's just yeah. no bad vibes ever with him. Hey P, you had a nice clip on um, Thursday's Impact, man. Are you talking about the uh, the math promo? Uh huh. With the oh my the headgear. I'm like, oh my god! Hey, Look at this. Is that the original right one? Here. That's the original head That's gear. the original one, dude. No so j- just so you know that night, I mean, you were part of that night. Uh, I was getting super glued my chin multiple times so it would stop bleeding. Um, and then I still had to do that promo at the end. And that was like the last thing we filmed like that night on the on St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they said, yeah, we want you to do. They didn't tell me anything, what to say, <laughs> nothing. They said, Petey's going to walk in and do Steiner math. And so it was up to me. I'm like, okay, do I make up my own math? Do I just kind of recite? I can't recite the whole promo because it's like a minute and a half long and I, you know, TV time. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to do the, I'm just going to recite like 45 seconds of it. And just like the first one, I always talk about the first one, it being one take and people are like, how'd you keep a straight face? And I'm like, I didn't, you could see me look right in the camera during the middle of it. When he's talking all this math, I just go, <laughs> okay i guess we're still filming like yeah <laughs> so that one right there just so everybody knows and it's clear one take i, I learned it from scotty oh my god i was laughing i can't rewind it especially with the math and then you look at different people's faces on there and i'm like oh my goodness yeah uh alicia's I, face I, is definitely you know, alicia, that was the best killed me alicia killed me oh my god <laughs> You had a uh, taste. I, I want to take this back to you, Trey. Before we wrap this up, we got time for one more question apiece. I, I want you had a taste for being in a stable. Is mm-hmm. it something you want to go back to doing? Do you want to be a stable leader? Is this now that you're on your own? Do you have a preference? I had an idea when I came back to Impact to like kind of do a stable that I led with like two. I wanted like two young punks to like run for me like i kind of like i wanted to come back as a bad guy and do something like that because it would have been different and then be, and the reason why i had that idea i remember when i shot it to d he's like don't you want like two like big bodyguards i said no d i said the only time i've ever been robbed i had two dudes my age and they or yeah it was two guys my age and they made like two 11 year olds run my pockets <laughs> and, and, and I was like, I was like, I was like that was that was the like that was the most insulting shit ever. It made me so mad because like like instinctively I just want to like punch this little eleven year old, but I was sixteen and I couldn't do that because if I did that I would have got jumped by the dudes that were my age. So it was just like wow, man, like I felt powerless. And I was like, I think that's I think that's shittier to do than have two big bodyguards. It's like have two little punk kids that are easily or easy to manipulate. So that was an idea that I had, but honestly, I don't, I don't have a desire or anything I, like I, or anything like like a hard desire. I, I'm fine with being a singles guy. I've always it's primarily what I've done on the independence anyway. So it's nothing new. So man, that'd be hilarious if like I got a couple kids and they could be your bodyguards and run uh, the other people's pockets and stuff. I think that's hilarious. I that's I, really I, what I wanted to do. Man, I love it. Uh, so <laughs> okay, before I. The, my question for you, so I think, I don't really remember the first time that we met. I know it was like around 2018, um, 
I know you guys had that, I guess you call it enhancement match. It was all you guys that are like huge stars at Impact now. What was it? Like you and Ace and, you know, uh, Dez and Zach against OV, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, did you, it, when they when they said this to you and they, they had this match, I don't know, like who, who made that happen? Like Sammy? And then if they made it happen, it was like, hey, we're going to look at these guys in this match. I know it's going to be an enhancement match, but we each want you to do something kind of cool and see if these guys got it before we sign like how did that all happen? well we had gotten a look a year beforehand like uh when ove first debuted they had the match against zach and jason cade oh yeah we were Zach knocked jake out in the open gave him i remember the, that knee to the dome knocked him out screwed the whole match I showed up the next day to uh and i teamed with john bolin and i remember scott came up to me and said yeah, man. Because of recent events, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be absolutely nothing. You 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 are here to get your ass kicked. Like, <laughs> okay, so that was 2017 or so. Yeah, that was back. That was down in Orlando. Okay. okay. Yep. And then the following year, I mean, we didn't hear anything back for a little bit, but um, we we were kind of creating a little bit more buzz on the indies. And Scott, or I was actually in Toronto at the time, and Sammy called me. He was like, "Hey, man, are you free?" for this date and i my foot was i think i had like a fractured yeah i had a fractured ankle at the time and he was like are you good for this date uh scott asked if um uh, or scott said that like he he wants to use you for this and he's actually going to give you a look so like think of some think of some stuff you want to do and then we're, we'll see like what we're able to do when we get there and i remember the day i got there man i was my foot was in such bad shape I was practicing doing um, the spider through the ropes and I clipped my foot on the the beam on the side of the ring and it dropped me. And I about like broke into tears. My foot hurt so bad and we still did the match anyway, but we were, they told us that like Sammy came up to, it, Des wasn't in the match because Des was already signed, but he just oh, hadn't, yeah, that's been right. he hadn't been on TV in a while. But Sammy came up to us and was like, hey, like, this is your opportunity. They are going to, like, let you get in, like, two things a piece. So let's pick these out smart and try to get you guys jobs. And I remember the match finished and Bravo was the ref. And he came up to me on the outside and he goes, good job, kid. You might have just got yourself a job. <laughs> and then I was sleeping on my way to IWA one day. And Zach calls me and he wakes me up. And he's all smiley and giddy. And I was like, what's up with you? And he goes, I got signed Impact. And I was like, oh, that's that's dope, bro. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't. <laughs> like, I didn't hear from anyone. And then I was like, yeah, man, real cool. And then he was like, why you got to be a Debbie Downer? And I was like, no, nah, man, I'm just tired. You know what I mean? I was I was bummed because I didn't have any news at all. No one said shit to me. And he goes, well, how long well, after did you well, get that call? Well, Zach says, he goes, well, you're getting signed too. And I was like, Am I? He goes, yeah, they're supposed to be getting a hold of you. Dude, he, he told me, he said, they're supposed to be calling you today. Scott didn't call me for another week. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, Scott. So, I mean, just being strung along, I was like, man, maybe I'm not getting signed. Like, maybe, like, they really just, <laughs> like, had a, a change of heart. I was like, oh, dude, no. And then I remember Scott sent me my contract. And it was there was a typo on it, so it said that the contract wouldn't even like be in effect for a, like a year. Because so like I was I didn't sign the contract at first. I waited like a full week, and then Scott messages me. He goes, "Hey, bud, like you gonna sign that and send it back?" I was like, "I got a I got a question. Like, is there a typo in the in the date?" And he goes, "No, everything's right." And I was like, "Oh, all right, uh, damn. Okay, I, I, I let me think about it." So Scott was confused why I was thinking about it. And then one day he just randomly calls me and I bring it to Zach's attention. And he's like, yeah, dude, I got the same typo. Like, I don't know what we do. Like, does that mean like we don't wrestle for a full year, but we're fine? Like, I, I really don't understand. We were so confused. So we neither of us would sign the contract at first. And then Scott calls me and he goes, I just realized what you were talking about, about this typo. And I was just like, oh, oh my God. Thank God. He goes, yeah. Uh, that's supposed to be like effective this year. I'm going to, I'm going to get that changed and sent back to you. And then, and he said, is that why you haven't signed us? That's exactly why I didn't sign. I did not know what that meant. I was like, are we just like in purgatory for a year? Am I not going to heaven? What we just want to Dude, I was like for, a, it lasted like four or five days before he got back to me after I asked him about the typo. I was like, Jack, I'm so confused. I really don't. 
I That's know. great. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Uh, Dimitri, you got the last question, bud. Oh, my goodness. All right. I, I told you I was a fan. I watched everything that the Rascals did, and you brought up Ace Austin earlier. And when I first met um, Petey, once we started doing this podcast again, when Petey returned, um, I had to ask the question about your mother. That okay. was on impact with Ace Austin and stuff. Oh, and then yeah. Petey was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not his real mom. <laughs> Let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Dude, you want to know the worst part about that? My real mom was like in jail when that happened. Oh, no. <laughs> like that whole storyline. My mom's in jail. I was like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> well, you have your answer. She literally, right there. she got out in time for the pay per view, and I was like, you don't want to watch it. You just don't yeah. watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, who's this playing my? Who's, who's this playing me? <laughs> Dude, when she saw it, I mean, like, my mom, my mom looks nothing like Shelly West. It was just. <laughs> uh, Shelly's tall and redhead, and my mom's literally a walking like she's she's so short. She is just a pair of legs and a head. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, Dre, where where can people find you on social media and? t-shirts and all that kind of stuff and then your school as well you didn't even tell us the name of the school the the wrestling school is skull and bones pro wrestling skull we are man. we are on twitter at team skull and bones uh my personal twitter and instagram and instagram are both at the trey miguel and i'm also on tiktok now randomly i don't know i started doing like wrestling tiktoks and they are actually popular so i guess i'll just keep doing that anything is there like people i'll have to check that out too awesome so, some weird trends that people do on there, man. I, I, you're 100% right, way over my head, and I'm an old guy. So, the, what COVID did to people's creative processes? <laughs> I trust me, I get it, man. I, my kid shows me how stuff, and I'm like, what, what is he doing? Oh my God. So, anyways, listen, uh, thank you for coming on to the Wrestling Perspective on Fight TV. Don't forget, everybody. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, Wrestling Perspective Podcast, WP underscore pod on Twitter, Wrestling Perspective Pod, I think, on Instagram. Guys, Probably. everybody, good night. Peace.